What are the key features of a realistic skin texture? Over time, I have found three features that give skin textures a realistic quality. First, a natural skin tone for the base and a separate color for the lips. Second, tiny pores on the surface of the skin. And third, natural marks, especially over regions that receive direct sunlight. So if you're tired of fake perfection and want to give character to your characters, all you need to do is switch to the Materials tab, create a new material, give it a proper name, and head over to the Shading Workspace, where we can choose the base color of the skin with the help of a quick Google search and finish it off with some subtle subsurface scatter. This is nice and all, but the feature that will bring the model to life are the lips, which, even without makeup, should have a different tone to that of the skin. But to give the lips a separate color, first we need to create a mask defining the lips area. And to do this, we need to make a quick visit to the Texture Paint workspace. First things first, let's generate a UV map for our model. To do this, switch the interaction mode from Texture Paint to Edit. Select all vertices, and under the UV menu, choose Smart UV Project. Now switch back to Texture Paint mode, and from the Tools tab under the Texture slot, select Single Image and create a new one. We're almost done here, since we only need to draw over the lips with a white color and make sure to save the image before we jump back to the shading workspace. Now, to give the lips a specific color, we only need two nodes. First, an image texture node which brings in the masking image we just created. And second, a color ramp node which defines the transition from the base color of the skin to that of the lips. As a general rule, a natural color for the lips would be a slightly more saturated but darker version of the base skin. But if a natural look is not what you're after, you can be as expressive as you want with the help of the color ramp node. At this point, you might be wondering, Hey, Sina, no one's natural skin is ever this smooth. Well, except for AI-generated Instagram models. You are correct. So, for the second element of realism, let's add some roughness to the skin in the form of tiny pores. Zooming in, we can see that the density of the pores is controlled by the scale of the Voronoi texture node. The size of the pores is determined by the parameters on the map range node and their depth by the strength of the bump node. Aside from adding realism, these pores enable us to generate younger or older looking skin. But moving on, the third and final element of realistic skin is the natural marks that appear in areas which receive direct sunlight, something like freckles. We can procedurally generate these with the help of a noise texture node, a map range node, and a mix color node. The density of the freckles is determined by the scale value on the noise texture node, while the size of the freckles and how soft they are around the edges is determined by the parameters on the map range node. And as a bonus tip, I have found that layering two noise textures with different scales makes the result look much more natural. To combine these two layers, we can use a math node with its operation set to minimum. But there is a slight problem here. That is, usually freckles are not evenly spread over the entire face. In reality, parts of the skin that receive direct sunlight are more prone to freckles. To successfully separate these slightly sunburned sections of the skin, we can create a masking texture similar to what we did for the lips. So once again, Let's jump over to the Texture Paint workspace, create a new image, and paint the areas where we want freckles to be more prominent. 
This would usually be on the nose, the cheeks, and the forehead. Don't forget to save before heading back to the shading workspace, where all that remains is to bring in the final three nodes of the setup, an image texture node, a map range node, and a math node with its operation set to multiply. Note that the multiply node combines the procedurally generated freckles with the mask texture, but more importantly, keep in mind that it's the parameters on the map range node that let us set the spread and fall off for the freckled areas. You can find the project files for this tutorial, which includes some extra features on my Patreon page, linked in the description. But if you want to stylize your character, this next video might just be what you're looking for. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.